Intro to jumps. Animating a jump is the ball bounce exercise of character animation. Here are some animation examples of a character jump. In this video, we'll focus on the part of the jump when the character is in the air. The first requirement for a successful jump animation is a believable path of action. For inanimate objects, we know that the path of action of the center of gravity is a parabolic arc. This is illustrated by tracking the center of gravity for a spinning hammer flying through the air. It's the same for characters. While a character is in the air, the center of gravity follows a path of action that's a parabolic arc. What makes a character jump more complicated than a flying hammer is that the character can shift the center of gravity within the body by changing the pose while in the air. For example, here we see a jump in which the arms and legs swing upward near the apex. Notice that when we track the person's waistline, the path of action is flattened around the apex. This gives the illusion of floating since it's not the expected parabolic arc. The flattened path of action is due to the fact that the character raises the center of gravity when he raises his legs at the apex of the jump. The center of gravity actually does follow a parabolic arc because it rises into his chest when he brings his legs up to his body. But the audience doesn't see that. They're watching the trajectory of the torso. Ballet dancers use this effect to make their big jumps look graceful. If you watch their waistline or their head, it appears as if the ballet dancer is almost flying in a straight line. That's because the upward motion of their arms and legs shifts the center of gravity higher in the torso, so this apparent path of action is straighter than a parabolic arc. Now let's discuss the timing. The time in the air, from takeoff to apex, is called the jump time. The jump height is the vertical distance that the center of gravity rises from takeoff to apex. From the jump time, we can easily determine the jump height. This table lists the jump heights for various jump times. You can also use the formula that I've given to calculate jump height from jump time. For example, for a jump time of six frames, the jump height is one third times six times six, which equals 12 inches. Notice that this table and this formula are the same as for simple objects, such as a baseball, falling from a given apex height. That's because gravity affects all objects in the same way, both going up and coming down. Let's use this in an example. For a jump time of six frames, the jump height is 12 inches, which is one foot. That means that there's six frames from takeoff to apex and another six frames from apex to landing. The total time in the air, which is called the hang time, is 12 frames for a jump height of one foot. Notice that the jump time does not depend on the forward distance of the jump. It only depends on the vertical distance, that is, the jump height. Let's watch a few character jumps from the film Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Notice how the characters stay in the air for an unrealistically long time, especially since many of the jumps have little height. That sequence was filmed using wire work. That is, the actors were supported by wires. Wire work is used in both live action and in motion capture. Wire work distorts the timing of a character jump, but this can be a visual design decision. 
In the film Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, this distorted timing is intentional. In the film, the ordinary characters move normally, but the Kung Fu masters are able to manipulate the laws of physics. In summary, the path of action of a character's center of gravity is a parabolic arc. The apparent path of action may not look like a parabolic arc if the character shifts the location of the center of gravity. This typically happens when they move their arms and legs. As with simple falling motion, the time in the air depends on the height of the apex. The table that I gave you has the matching jump heights and jump times. You can also use the formula. And finally, the timing of a jump sometimes is distorted in action sequences that use wire work. In this video, we focused on the part of the jump when the character is in the air. In the next video, we'll look at another important element of a jump, the part when the character is crouched and is pushing up to get into the air. See you then.